I don't know about you, Bradley, but I've got a severe case of tinselitis. <sighs> Merry Christmas! Terrible punish. I thought it was pretty strong. I've been planning that. Like, I'm not gonna lie. I heard it on a podcast and went, hey, I should I should use that. I'm having a bit of that. It's, I'm re-gifting that particular pun. I like it. Yeah. Like a sort of uh, secret Santa that you don't like, that you're just keep, you're continuing to Santa it around. Passing it along, yeah. Exactly. Santering around. Santering around. Sounds like a bad Christmas movie. Very wrong. Or, yes. Anyway, welcome to the Craft Beer Channel Christmas show. This is where we get to let our hair down, um, put on our... Christmas this, jumpers? This is more Christmas than your Johnny. That is not true. Mine look has the colours on, on it. Look at the colours, look at the bat wings. Yeah, famously Christmassy blue. Uh, so this is our annual video where we drink through our favourite Christmas beers of the season, try them with some mince pies, go down to your local Tesco and find the cheesiest, actually in this case no cheese, uh, Christmas crisps. Blankiest. Do a bit of matching with that and generally... Mince around. Yeah, mince around. See, this is... This is not a strong star. <laughs> Should we get a beer in the glass and dig into our favourite Christmas beers of 2022? Quite the lineup, Johnny, we've assembled here. Uh, beers from at least three countries. At least three. Oof. I mean, th three. Three it's nations. The, the three nations, yeah. Well, uh, and we, we're going to start in the UK with a brew we've never featured on the channel, which yeah. is Simple Things Fermentation. Nice. The reason I got in touch with these guys is because they, they pitched it by saying they love Still and Act from uh, the dollar, which is my joint favorite Christmas beer great, of all time. Bevy. Sweet caramelized malts, fruity yeast esters, and warming alcohol, aromas of fig, boozy banana, and mulling spices. Come on. Brewed at the Bakehouse, Glasgow, and it certainly tastes like it's got- Like uh, it's been baked. Bake, baked goods in yeah, it. Yeah, right? like, almost like they put some Christmas cake in the mash, right? Mm. Lovely, thick and syrupy. You can see it clinging to the glass. There's lots of residual sweetness to it. That is a joy. Yeah, it's really lovely and, and sweet and, um, full-bodied, full of character. Um, while we're drinking this beer, I think I think almost, perhaps straight out of the gate, this is gonna be the best one for a mince has, pie. Has to be baked goods. Um, before you eat your mince pie though, while I eat Go mine, on. I want you to tell me what your favorite craft beer moment of 2022 has been. Winning all of our awards <laughs> a couple of weeks ago was pretty good. That was pretty great. Yeah, yeah, I finally got one for my own, uh, own collection. lacking trophy cabinet of one. <laughs> Uh, along with my swimming badges from uh, childhood. There you go. Is that, is that, that's how long the gap's been? Swimming? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Craft Beer oh, Channel. I, I did win some broadcast awards uh, when I used to work in television, Johnny. Did you now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And how would this win rate among those? Pretty high. Yeah, yeah. pretty high. Yeah. I mean, the content we make is obviously better than television. My other highlight has to be our Siren documentary, oh. all about the hops that built the Craft Beer Revolution. I learned so much doing that. You know, often you do the research, and then you make the film and you sort of lay it to rest. This one has changed my whole outlook on essentially how craft beer came about. Yeah. And that's what I think was really powerful about that. Uh, couldn't have less to do with any of these no. beers, which are not hoppy at all. But it's bloody fantastic. Yeah, it's perfect. It's ba this is basically the filling. It's bringing out even more spice, I think, from the mince pie. I kind of, when I saw these, mm. I was like, that'd be easier to dress the set with, but I'm oh. not sure I want a small mince pie. But actually, wanna. You, you get more pastry to mince, mm -hmm. which I'm always in favour of. And it's just it's just straight in. You can do that. I'm gonna enjoy it. So uh, I'm taking my time. He's eating slower. Well, you've eaten two in the time I've eaten half of one, haven't you? Oh, mm. mate. The meantime documentary was great. It was amazing to go on that discovery of the history of IPA. Fantastic. Um, our work we did bringing a new force to the world of the London beer scene. The darkness, London Black, is upon the capital now. I think uh, <laughs> a dark shadow, a dark across shadow. the capital of of, of yeah. Nitro Porter from Antipatch and Hobbit. A Hobday. foamy shadow of nitrogen yeah. has that... just entered <laughs> yeah. the room. Um, it's think... smooth, but it will drown you. It's phenomenal. Yeah, is what it is. Yeah, I mean we've done a lot this year. Some right. really big projects, and I'm amazed that's happened in the first year of me being a dad. With all the work that you do outside of the Craft Beer Channel, mm. like. I'm amazed we've pulled that off, also with the fact that we drink on most sheets. Um, yeah, cheers to that. What cheers a year. to that. Yeah, it's been an amazing year for us. Thank you for everybody watching, uh, all of the Patreons especially, and our pro Patreons as well. You've, you've made it possible. So next we're gonna go to another highlight of yeah. 22 for me, which was our trip to Omnipoyo. 
Was that 22? That was 2022, mate. That was like right at the beginning, right? That was March. They hadn't opened very long. Like they're, they're six months or so. Their first birthday, I believe, was uh, the end of November this year. Right, 2022. wow. So they'd opened in November 2021. So when we say opened, we mean um, they'd opened their... Sorry. Their first brewery. Yeah, they'd commissioned the brewery. Yeah. Yes. Um, now this beer from Omnipoyo is Imperial Yule Must Holiday Sour. Yule Must? Yule Must. What is Yule Must? So Yule Must is a, a Swedish soft drink. It's a malt drink. I get uh, Malt drink? Basically think of it as like a hoppy Coca-Cola. And it comes out every Christmas and they have an Easter version in Sweden as well. So it's like caramel flavours, hop extract. Soft drink. Soft drink. This is traditional. This is traditional in Sweden. And they've made an alcoholic 5.9%. So not that imperial, but a 5.9% alcoholic version. So hops, caramel, colouring. I mean, it looks like Coca-Cola, right? It's very, very dark. And I think, I think there's lactose in this as well. I think they've... It smells sugary, doesn't it? Like, yeah, milk sugar milky. as well. So barley, wheat, oats and milk sugar. So we think it's going to be quite thick and unctuous. It smells like but, cereal milk. Yeah. Pe people compare the Swedish thing, the Yule must to root, root beer, basically. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. So that's the kind of vibe that it kind of has, but it has hop extract in it. It smells great. Really, like, very pick, pick and mix aisle. <laughs> it's very, it's like, yeah, it's like squidgy candy. Yeah. Sort of like Haribo-esque. It's kind of amazing. Madness. Okay, I get this. It's kind of like wow. soft drinky, yeah. Very soft drinky. Very crisp and clean. Like, mm. no bitterness, no acidity, no roastiness, despite the colour. Like, sure maybe alcoholic. it has colouring in it. Definitely alcoholic. I, well, I mean, we could we could test it, but I think we should we should trust them. Did you just snort it? Yeah. You're trying to get the alcohol out by snorting. Yeah, I was, right, yeah. that's one it's way of doing it. It's a new technique. Yeah, the... okay. Um, and I was now going to ask you, what, what's been your beer of the year? Because possibly mine yeah. was in plenty which was the Imperial Stout we had in the Omnipoyo video. I still, that, because I've never been a big pastry stout lover, that kind of changed a lot for me. And that's kind of my beer for the year. It was all the sort of single origin-ness of it, wasn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, that was the big thing we learned, that we thought Omnipoyo were using extracts and, yeah. I don't know, even like back sweetening and stuff. And yeah, they do use a lot of lactose, but they do very special techniques to get incredibly high gravities. And then they source their adjuncts, you know, well, better well, than some breweries source their malt and their hops. I would say better than some coffee shops source their coffee <laughs> yeah, maybe. beans. Maybe. Incredible, yeah. incredible. Yeah. Um, talking of like sort of being of a place and all that kind of good stuff that, that is around that, I think my favourite beer of the year, London Black. I'm a Londoner. I love porters. I love like a big like stouts and all that. You kind love of the stuff. unctuous nitrogen the pour darkness. as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My cheek, my sort of like uh, little secret thing. Sometimes I love a Guinness. I do How like much a Guinness. Guinness you drink? Yeah, I it's not a like secret a for me. I like a Guinness <laughs> on occasion, right? So, you know, the the advent of London Black and you know it's kind of like richer texture, richer flavors that are in there. I think it's just amped it up, but it feels like it's for, from where I'm from, and I just love it. So that's it. a big moment for you as well. Like now, you do, would you always <sighs> pick London Black over Guinness? Uh, that'd be quite a big change for you. Yeah, I'm just waiting for it to become available in Weatherspoons airports. Right, okay. airport Weatherspoon. Sorry, might, might then, take a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Might once once that happens, I can fully <laughs> transition. <laughs> so we both picked dark beers for our beers of the year, and yeah. it was it was a dark year. <laughs> Every year we come in with our big in big in twenty whatever it is and go this year's going to be better and it just it gets worse. I just stopped watching the news, Johnny. I just watch good news now. Is is there a thing where we <coughs> can just watch good news other than the Craft Beer Channel? Yeah, is... yeah. There's a few sort of like news? niche niche outlets that just tell you good news. Okay, just to kind of stop you from feeling full of woe. Well, I'll tell you what. We'll put some links to the good news in the descriptions box, maybe the comments, so that you guys can look back on. Some of the positives from 2022, yeah, because there must have been some. One of them was, of course, the continued innovations in craft beer. Yes. One of which I'm holding in my hand. So this is from Brew York, who we're doing our live show with. It's called The Dreams of Brew York 2022. It is a cranberry, red currant, apple, and cinnamon pastry sour. Apple. Wow, that is like super Christmasy. Bloody hell! Color of that. Lovely color. Cheeky Vimto. Where's your glass gone, Bradley? So essentially, we've got the pie filling without the pastry. 
Nice. And I'm very excited about that because I'm probably going to have another mince pie with it. <laughs> <laughs> Why <laughs> so not? This is one of the beers that is featured in our live show, so I'm excited to try it too. Oh, wow. Ooh, blimey. Loads of cranberry to that. You can almost smell the, the tannins of a cranberry. You can almost hear the cranberries, you can hear, you can Johnny. Hear the sea. The cranberries. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Rich, thick body, sweetness, element of custard from the lactose, then just all berries. Proper pie vibes. That is nice, isn't it? Yeah. But it, like you say, it's it's not like super heavy. Pie without the pie. Pie mm. without the pastry, sorry. <laughs> Jesus. That's delicious as well. Like Christmas beers, they often seem that like they have to be rich, thick, yeah, yeah, heavy, yeah. caramelly. And like, that is delicious with mince pie. Yeah. Could be delicious with Christmas dinner as your cranberry sauce. Could be delicious with... with you know, like um, smoked salmon, which people traditionally have. Loads of uses for that. Maybe the lactose makes it a little bit less food friendly, uh -huh. but it certainly makes it more fun just on its own. Yeah, I think this is the thing, right? With Christmas beers, like you said, everyone thinks they're like dark and like super overwhelmingly Probably powerful. Belgian. Belgian stuff. Things that like knock your socks off, you can only drink one of them, you know, whatever. I think it's actually like a bit of a sort of palate refresher almost this one right and it's rare to say that about a pastry sour but it is using such acidic fruits makes it yeah quite nicely balanced especially when you've got such a heavy field of uh beers you know like some, drinking something like this i think is like a real just like zinger just to get like bring the mood back up mm. it's great do you feel like our view on pastry has changed quite a bit this year like there was the on the visit we said the pastry sours are going to be big this year mm. i i wouldn't say i've come to accept lactose but i've come to acknowledge it and go this can still be delicious sometimes oh big time it has its place just not in ipas yeah well yeah yeah you know? yeah we're never going to change our minds on that i don't mm -hmm. think so this next beer yeah we are ramping it up but actually this is a very i think refined classy giantly boozy beer oh it was it came i think third in the blind taste test of christmas beers that i did a couple of weeks ago okay but it was not a beer I'd ever had before. It absolutely blew me away. It was the only pale beer on the table. What's it called? And instead, it's called Bon Secours. Bon Secours. You know, I don't know anything about this brewery or anything. All I know about it is it's Naturel and Vivante. And the label's uh, not Come, so coming off. All right, all right. <laughs> Un passion de f uh, la passion de une famille, uh -huh. a service de beers de caractère. I think. Family with passion, uh, service in beer. Go on, keep going, I'm translating. De character. <laughs> Much character. Yeah. Uh, um, it's all about family, Johnny, which, you know, Christmas time is all about family, right? It's all yeah. about family, Fast and the Furious, that franchise. Really? It's all about family. Th their whole thing is family, isn't oh, it? Oh, I thought you meant Christmas. No, about no, watching no, Fast no, and the God Furious. no. I don't watch Fast and the Furious. But they've managed to sort of launch the biggest franchise in movie history off of the back of the idea of family. <laughs> And that these ragtag bunch can become a family. As like far as I could tell, the idea of that film was cars and a bald guy. Many bald guys. Little tip for people, which I yeah. discovered possibly even this year, right? I drink a lot of beers with these silly lids on. Yeah, Great for home room. Right? But it's not a gross top. Stop calling that. Um, I used to pour them like this and, you know, you know what happens, yeah, right? It flips over, yeah. That happens, yeah, right? Yeah, great. I love that when that goes up. Here's a tip for you, people yeah. at home. Go on. You've pulled all the beer out of there, see it. I mean, I was doing that anyway. Life is all about learning, Johnny. It's all about new experiences, new beers. Yeah, I don't know what's happened there. Yeah, so we've learned that that's a bottle conditioned <laughs> beer and I shouldn't have poured the last of it in. Oh, I should have switched the glasses while you weren't looking. Uh, super boozy, but it's like croissants and like fresh baked goods. It's got kind of that bready thing going on. Some honey, some, some fresh honey. grass kind of hoppiness. Um, and I think this could be absolutely brilliant with both of our crisps from this mm. year. Shout out to the, actually no shout out to the place we bought them. Um, we love Tacky Crisp. We don't do crisp and beer matching videos much anymore because right. people don't watch them. And I thought it was the best stuff we did. Well, I mean, you know, we are multi award winning crisp journalists. <laughs> if there was a crisp guild, yeah. maybe we'd win it. So Brad's got pinks and blankets. I reckon there's a crisp guild. No. We need to get in on that. Maybe we should speak to Walkers. No, they're, go, they're out of the guild, I reckon. Are they too big for the guild? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's craft. It's craft guild. As soon as they teamed up with Gary... Uh, Lineker? Gary Lineker, they were like, you know, you're too big for your boots now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Your ears are far you should... too big for your boots. <laughs> um, so you've got pigs and blankets. Mm -hmm. I think that's going to work really nicely. I've got 
turkey and sage butter, which is fancier than my actual Christmas dinner. I feel like I'm eating a sort of uh, French sausage roll, Johnny. Why French? It's oh. like the pastry from mm. this matching with the sort of, you know, slightly sausagey notes of these pigs in blankets crisps. I'm, I'm just looking to see how they can justify sage butter. Yeah, I don't like the sound of buttery crisps. I mean, you'll like these crisps. Mm. There's there's no butter involved. We've, we've got yeast extract. I like yeast. Malted extract, which... I like malt. That's, that's a beer. Hang on, is this beer? Were you reading a beer label out here? <laughs> we've got yeast, we've Sugar. got malt. Sugar, yeah, okay. It's Belgium salt, beer. You beer. Salt, okay, so it's Belgium slash... Uh, uh, what do you call it, beer? What are they called? Gosas. Gosa, yeah, yeah. We've got flavouring. Increasingly common in beer. It's a pastry, Belgium. Yeah. Yeah. But then we've got onion powder, garlic powder, black pepper, citric acid, paprika. Pap. pap <laughs> paprika. 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 Pepper in my paprika. Paprika. Pa paprika extract. Oh. Paprika and then sage extract. extract. There's no butter, yeah. but it is kind of buttery. Oh. Mm. I saw. Uh, I saw <clears throat> a girl on Instagram. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> he made these beautiful potatoes. Okay. They were like little barrels. Oh, I'm relieved, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then she wrapped them in bacon, and then she put them uh, with confit uh, and clarified butter, filled it up in a pan, and let it all reduce down, and it made them into these incredible-looking little barrels of bacony, potatoy goodness. Stop. My God. See, that's the kind of stuff. Free the nipple, ban that kind of stuff on yeah, Instagram. Yeah, yeah, it's real, yeah. real potato porn. That's not, that's naughty. <laughs> it's real naughty. That, that's it's the stuff bad. that bad Santa eats, yeah, 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 just yeah. by the fistful. Not for long, mate. He'd have a coronary, I reckon, if he ate I too mean, many of these. I'm pretty sure bad Santa does. Too many that's of probably bad Santa 3. <sighs> Most, mostly a scene from the hospital. You know, is Christmas Day complete without something utterly silly? The kind of thing that makes your relatives go, oh, what are you drinking? Hell no. Yeah. So that's what we're going with beer number five. So this is another brewery we've never featured on the Craft Beer Channel. It is Umbard. Nice. And it's a very festively named Stoutzilla. I love it. Um, and I've tried the other can of this and it's absolutely goddamn stunning. Can I just, I, can I just hold up the Yeah, please talk about the design. For a second because it's kind of like, it looks like uh, the Kremlin is getting attacked by Godzilla. I don't know if it is the Kremlin, but it's very much... A sort of Russian uh, big building that's that's getting set ablaze by Godzilla, which I, you know, I think it's interesting. I don't know exactly what it means, Johnny, but have you ever watched any Godzilla films? Like sometimes Godzilla isn't portrayed as the bad guy. Whoa, what? There's like another creature that will be like a giant moth or something that comes out. And, oh, and the Godzilla, versus ones. Yeah, Godzilla <clears throat> will take it down, right? And he'll save Tokyo. Right, so maybe they're saying that ain't Tokyo. They're saying that, that <clears throat> like Godzilla is the good guy and he's taking down the bad guy. He's he's crispifying Putin right there. Crispifying. Exactly. It's turned him into a a buttered sage turkey boy. <laughs> <laughs> if we're found dead in January. Oh my god, <laughs> I am sneezing a lot. I don't I don't think that was Putin. Just Massive. oodles, oodles of bourbon. <sighs> Loads of lovely oakiness and roastiness. And a ton of coffee. Crawling up the glass, Johnny. It's, it's a silly looking, silly smelling beer. Yeah. Lovely and um, dry and Moorish and complex, which a lot of these big kind of barrel aged adjunct stouts aren't. They lose complexity, they get too sweet sometimes. This one doesn't fall into that trap. Which means it's going to be better on Christmas Day because you're not going to be, you know, you've, you've demolished the um, all the chocolates, Quality Street or Roses, depending on. But this is where your this has got like. Tonka chocolate. No Tonka. Vanilla. Cacao vanilla okay. coffee. Mate, all the beans. Yeah, Oof. all the beans. You'll be full of beans. Full of beans. I'm already ready full of for beans. Christmas dinner. My God. Just silly. It's. Uh, what I love about this is how beautifully balanced it is, how incredibly drinkable it is, you know? Mm. I always struggle, and this is why my beer stash looks like it does, I struggle to get through big beers like this, right? Both for the ABV, but also 
you know, the flavours. This one, I could happily drink that can, whether I should or I shouldn't. You should share, but I'm not really sure I will this Christmas. Well, the sharing, apparently it is the season for sharing, right? Yeah, I don't really, I don't really buy into that. I mean, that can's not very big. I'm not sure I want to share that can. So I mean, it's, it's big enough to topple, say, a, a first aid cap, I reckon. Okay, <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, that's it for this year's Christmas special. We have our live show still to come. Otherwise, we'll join you in January for our big in 2023, in which we tell you what exciting is coming this year in terms of the trends. And we'll also tell you a little bit about what we'll be up to next year. We've already filmed some really exciting stuff for January and for February. So we'll be keeping those bleak two bloody months as entertaining as we can on the Craft Beer Channel. Otherwise, there's five mince pies left in this pack of 12. There's a packet of crisps and there's the remainder of these beers. And I suggest we get through those, um, I don't know, before one of us uh, falls over. Merry Christmas, beer geeks! <laughs> <laughs>